Sheriff, I got this. Protecting your business from cyber attacks can be unrelenting. Today's adversaries move fast. CrowdStrike moves faster. CrowdStrike. We stop breaches. Good afternoon. It's great to be here. And it was great to hear from my friends, Ambassador Fick and Kemba Walden in that last session. Um, you know, building off of those conversations, today I want to talk about a topic that I think is really the, you know, the next cybersecurity policy challenge for us all. And that's ecosystem level challenges in cybersecurity. In an era of exciting possibilities fueled by technological innovation, devices, networks, and data are interconnected in a vast digital ecosystem. This means that what organizations build in this ecosystem affect other organizations, for better or for worse. Today, we are at an inflection point when it comes to the cyber policy challenges, to the resiliency of our digital ecosystem, and to the cyber policy solutions needed to address them. Year after year, there are significant cyber incidents perpetrated by nation state actors affecting government agencies and our national security. These incidents target specific agencies and significant government data repositories to further strategic geopolitical aims. So what are today's ecosystem level problems? The pattern is all too familiar. A high profile cyber incident is discovered and in the midst of an investigation, it is revealed that a nation state actor has leveraged long-standing vulnerabilities and ubiquitous IT architecture to achieve a jarring level of system access. To make matters worse, there are often indications that an adversary has been in the victim's network for a long time. Yet, if the victim lacked a resilient cybersecurity program to begin with, then there generally isn't enough logging to tell the full story. How long was the adversary dwelling? Was it a month, months, a year, years? The lingering questions leave defenders alarmed, not only at the known impact of cyber incidents, but importantly, at the unknown impact, the long-term consequences of each cyber incident. We've seen some deeply disruptive breaches over the past few years. What stands out most, however, is how much worse some could have been. For every breach where the threat actor's motivation was espionage, even those that required complex remediations, there could have been a much worse scenario. Indeed, recent breaches could have been catastrophic. Under different geopolitical circumstances, adversaries might have deployed wipers or ransomware-like attacks across thousands or tens of thousands of possible victims. Consequently, Impact to the victims was determined by the prerogative of the adversary, not any particular limitation to their access, resources, or know-how. Such access is a key component in adversaries' pre-positioning for future attack opportunities. The reality is that significant cybersecurity incidents resulting in data breaches, disruption of services, and national security consequences occur with such regularity that policymakers are inundated with tactical demands. These demands pose critical questions about IT hygiene, cybersecurity best practices, and resourcing. This means less time is spent on long-term strategic issues, like achieving cyber resiliency in our digital ecosystem. Fortunately, we have seen some positive developments in the cyber realm as of late. Within the government specifically, which often sets the tone for broader parts of industry, We've seen the executive order on improving the nation's cybersecurity and the national cybersecurity strategy help best practices to go mainstream and organize government agencies around foundational cybersecurity policy concepts. Critically, we've seen some incredibly promising initiatives aimed at providing solutions to the ecosystem as a whole. For example, secure by design. Secure by design principles have been developed by CISA 
to promote the notion of security being part of the design phase of a product and implemented by default. Secure by Design is a significant section of the national cybersecurity strategy and aligns with the goal of shifting the burden from would-be victims to those best suited to provide security. Recently, CISA launched a Secure by Design pledge, which CrowdStrike signed, to demonstrate measurable progress in securing products. Software supply chain security. The concept of supply chain security was propelled forward by the executive order on improving the nation's cybersecurity and the Office of Management and Budget's subsequent guidance to direct federal agencies to utilize software that was built following cybersecurity best practices. With regard to open source, the concept of open source software security recognizes that all parts must be secure for the sum to also be so. CISA has published an open source software security roadmap to begin to drive the community towards securing foundational open source software. The Software Bill of Materials, commonly known as SBOM, which due to its ability to illuminate individual software components, has become a potential tool in tackling software supply chain risk management. And memory safe languages and leveraging memory safe languages can preemptively reduce a common attack surface. CISA and international partners have worked alongside Secure by Design campaign partners to address vulnerabilities in programming languages. These developments set a policy foundation for creating a more resilient architecture for our digital ecosystem. They are designed to improve the quality of the materials we use to construct this architecture and to help us verify the source of these materials. Now it's time to focus on how we implement these materials in a resilient way. A resilient digital architecture should be able to weather a storm rather than collapse in the face of an incident. We must develop code in a secure manner and verify its progeny. However, it is critical too that we deploy software in a resilient manner, one that reduces rather than increases risk in our digital ecosystems. The through line of these initiatives is that they apply leverage to a weak or failing part of the IT ecosystem as it exists today. And from the groundwork laid by these initiatives, policymakers are in a good position to tackle the next emerging ecosystem level cybersecurity challenge, concentration risk. At present, many government entities are extraordinarily reliant on one major vendor. Their IT stack may include just a single provider for operating system, cloud, productivity, email, chat, collaboration, video conferencing, browser, identity, generative AI, and increasingly security as well. This means that the building materials, the supply chain, and even the building inspector are all the same. If that provider fails, the consequences for its users could be catastrophic. If that one vendor security culture is inadequate, like Microsoft's is, according to the Cyber Safety Review Board, then the situation is dangerous. The Cyber Safety Review Board's most recent report covered the July 2023 breach by Chinese state actors, but a subsequent breach by Russian state actors that occurred in November 2023 went undetected until January 2024. This illustrates that the problems are entrenched and have the potential for significant consequences. When viewed as one-off incidents, these problems seem as if they come and go. However, the longer arc of recent history tells a much different story. A quarter century ago, the original edition of George Kurtz's book, Hacking Exposed, described the golden ticket authentication vulnerability. By 2020, a related attack, dubbed Golden SAML, permitted Russian state actors to gain access to sensitive government systems. And the latest iteration, dubbed Golden MSA, was a key feature of last summer's Microsoft Exchange breach. What began as an adversary getting the keys to a house has evolved into the adversaries getting the keys to the kingdom and ultimately becoming the locksmith. All the while, more and more critical services are unlocked with these keys. I was on this stage a year ago with CISA Executive Assistant Director Eric Goldstein who proclaimed 
Identity-based attacks need to be our North Star in anticipating adversary tactics. This remains true today. But with each passing year, the problem grows more consequential. Fortunately, the community is beginning to assess these problems in a more concerted way. Last month, the Center for Cybersecurity Policy and Law hosted a tabletop exercise, which we participated in, to assess how IT stack concentration risk might impact federal agencies during an attack. Unsurprisingly, in that scenario, an agency using one vendor fared far worse than an agency using a constellation of IT providers. That was one scenario, and as we all know, conditions change and our adversaries are quite adaptive. But it's clear that more rigorous attention is necessary here. So what can we do? How can we break this cycle? Unfortunately, as a security community, we fail to measure concentration risk well. The security community never really wrapped its arms around the monoculture problem decades ago when it existed at the operating system level. Now the problem exists vertically across the whole IT stack. With any risk, it is critical to have visibility into the threat. The status quo results in the threat of concentration risk remaining opaque until the adversary successfully infiltrates an entire IT stack. We now have an opportunity to start to take this problem more seriously. The next steps are fairly clear, as evidenced by a recent report by the Center for Cybersecurity Policy and Law characterizing the exercise I mentioned a moment ago. The Office of the National Cyber Director has demonstrated its ability to tackle complex issues and create results that have improved the way the US government manages cybersecurity risk. Given the ONCD's placement in the White House, it is well suited to task other federal agencies, such as CISA, DOD, and GSA, to examine and address concentration risk across all agencies. Any concentration risk effort would be complementary to ONCD's ongoing work, and they should collaborate with appropriate agencies, such as OMB, to orchestrate new initiatives. Given NIST's role as the authoritative developer of rigorous standards across IT risk and security, it would be logical for them to take action. They have robust processes in place to engage the community on a topic of this complexity, even those that believe that concentration risks in IT are overwrought. A thorough list of best practices, a framework, or controls document could help federal CISOs and IT risk managers address this type of problem. Implementation of such a framework or standard in the federal space would have positive effects for widespread adoption throughout the broader IT and critical infrastructure communities. Additionally, NIST already has concentration risk on its radar. In guidance stemming from the Executive Order on Improving the Nation's Cybersecurity, NIST identified concentration of products or services from a single supplier as a condition in the supply chain that could cause vulnerabilities. Existing references are minor and lack definitions, though, so a more comprehensive look is warranted. Everyone, including organizations I've referenced today, should contribute to this dialogue by providing requests for comment responses. And for its part, the National Security Council could build on the previous cyber executive order, tasking NIST and other agencies to take action on these recommendations. Congress, especially congressional oversight committees, should investigate and assess concentration risk across agencies. Given the significant risk to national security posed by successful cyber attacks, this action is within Congress's purview. There's also a very critical economic dimension to this issue. As a community, we can't really price risk accurately until we've measured it or worse, until an organization has experienced the outcome of failing to mitigate it. It's not clear that relying on one vendor for the entire IT stack is actually more cost effective on a risk adjusted basis. And even if that were the case on the margin, critical entities like government and military users would nonetheless have a reasonable expectation to invest in greater resilience. By virtue of their missions, some enterprises require a best in class solution. Some enterprises have an absolute need for continuity of operations. To address this problem holistically, defenders must have a means to assess and measure concentration risk in IT stacks. We can no longer tolerate solutions or architectures that risk crumbling from a single point of failure. Ultimately, as a community, we should have confidence that we are improving the long-term resiliency of our digital ecosystem. We must not leave consequential, 
strategic policy challenges like addressing IT stack concentration risk unmet for yet another day. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And I'll now turn the stage back over to the Washington Post. And it was delightful to be the warm-up act for General Nakasone. I know I'm looking forward to his session.